there everyone, we are back at Hollywood Studios. Today I'm going to give you a little bit of an update at some of the uh, rules that we've seen change with regard to mask policy and other pandemic rules that we've come to know and experience around the parks. They have changed. They have changed since the last time we've looked at them a little closer together. Today I'm going to update you. Now like before, the masks are enforced here around Disney. You are required to wear them whenever you're walking around the parks. Now the last time I gave you an update about some of the policies in the park, this area, Woody's Lunchbox, was closed. It's now been reopened and it's been open for a few weeks. Over the past few weeks, we've seen mobile order and pay get better and better. You simply scan the QR code or log into the app and go to the restaurant if you know it. Order and then once you have your order in, you're going to go to that side over there. Once you get that final notification on your app and the uh, little icon right there turns blue, the entire page will turn blue just like that. When your order is ready, you can go back to these tables and they'll let you in and sit down. But you're see, you can see here, guests are waiting to go in for those tables because uh, they're, as soon as their orders are confirmed, then they're let in by the cast member at the front. During some of the more crowded times here at Walt Disney World, some of the lines get extra extensions. You can see by alien swirling saucers here, these lines have actually been extended using just tape, just standard tape right there. Guests wait in line all the way back here if it gets that long. Otherwise, the line continues with those standard markings further in. A couple big updates include those attractions. And one of the biggest changes to the attractions that I have found so far is Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. We're going to ride it and I'm going to show you. You can see lines for attractions that are super popular, like Millennium Falcon, are marked all the way back here, even outside of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Disney knows that they're popular, and the tape continues. You can see certain characters are in new locations, like the Stormtroopers up there. We're not used to seeing them there, right by this First Order transport ship. They've moved around. One of the other updates that I've noticed is that several of the photo locations, especially around here in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, have been moved. You used to see those uh, 360 photographers here and the zoom out photographer against this corner, but no longer. They're not here for now. Another big update can be found right by Oga's Cantina and a few other quick dining areas. A little while ago, Oga's Cantina, along with many other dining venues, opened up to what was called as the wait list or the virtual wait list, where you could sign up and then, you know, same day, sometime there'd be some last minute availability. Ogus Cantina no longer has that. My guess is that it was just simply too popular. You know, too many people wanted to go who didn't have reservations. They just had too many reservations and people didn't miss their reservations. So they took off the wait list. My hope is that it comes back one day, but for now, no wait list at Ogus Cantina and a few other spots. Even though it no longer has the virtual wait list, Ogus Cantina is still as popular as ever. It's so popular. Another big update in line, take a look. We're actually gonna be walking backstage as we're waiting in line for Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. Run many of the lines here at Disney do not allow eating or drinking while in line. For Millennium Falcon, you just can't eat or drink beyond this point. The line has been extended so it doesn't go into Star Wars Galaxy's Edge as much. So we're actually going backstage just a bit as we uh, make our way through the line. Definitely a unique change here at Disney. When Hollywood Studios first reopened and we had Millennium Falcon Smugglers run, everyone had their own entire cabin to themselves. So if you were by yourself, you ended up with just an empty cabin with one pilot. They've changed that around quite a bit, not just here, but this is a good example. Here we go inside. You can see the differences just For as your we walk in there. Thank you so and much. And supervise hey, look, we're sitting behind these glass barriers here, the kind of harder plastic. We're engineers, and there's space between us and the other guests. Given the amount of space inside the Millennium Falcon, you can see we don't have either pilots or engineers right back here. See how this is? It's unique, it's different than what we're used to, but it's, uh, it's fascinating. They've locked on to us. Take evasive action. Good work. Got one. Excellent, my friend. This will greatly help the resistance. You have heard the first order and made Chewie proud. It's quite a difference. It really is, especially when you're flying maybe by yourself and you're used to being the pilot all the time. There's no longer an ability for you to request, oh, can I be pilot? Because it's very unique times. Things will change in the future, but for now, that's the update. This same process has been applied to several other attractions, including Rise the Resistance and even the monorail. Now, this is something just new, not related to what's happening during this time, but take a look at this new Patty Frog Sipper. I love it. Got a frog inside. Awesome. Lightsabers are extremely popular pieces of merchandise here inside of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, and you have the ability to make your own lightsaber. However, it does require a reservation, and at the time that I am filming this, reservations are full all the way through March. 
That's a lot of lightsabers, but you can build them here. Another update here, the market inside of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, that entire shopping district now has a line to go into it. So before it was just kind of, you could go inside, but now there's a line to get in there. Usually not too long of a wait, maybe about uh, 10, possibly 20 minutes at this length, but there's a lot to get in there now for popcorn, apparel, toys, everything back there. Now, since our last update, there are a few new relaxation stations. Now, these areas are meant for you to sit back, relax, take that mask off. You do not have to be eating or drinking. You can just hang out right back there with your mask off. Everyone's socially distant, and you can't take your mask off until you are fully seated. But once you are, you are good to go. This one, relatively new. One of the biggest updates, this is the last time we talked about it, Rise of the Resistance. Now, I made a video all about how to get that boarding group for Rise of the Resistance. The difference now, park hopping exists, and you can get that boarding group for Rise at 7 7 a.m. First thing in the morning, make sure you set that alarm. That's the biggest difference. All the other tips still apply, but instead of 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. in the park, it is 7 a.m. Around the park, around the resorts, you can get a boarding group. Make sure you have a pass for Hollywood Studios on that day. If you don't get one at 7 a.m., you can try for 1 p.m. That's the alternative once you're in the park. In terms of getting the pass itself, it's still pretty difficult. You, you need to be right on time in order to get one of those passes because so many guests are trying to get them. If you go for the 1 p.m. time, almost guarantee that uh, you're gonna get a later group, probably beyond 70, but it depends on the day. I found out from a very kind cast member that the one o'clock boarding group you know, distribution is almost always just backup boarding groups. That's just how they do it, just because of the nature of the attraction. And uh, it really depends on the day, what number a backup boarding group is. You can't just say 120 is back up and you know 90 is not. It depends totally on the day and the running time. So just varies. I would go for the seven o'clock if possible. If not, 1 p.m. You wanna be right on it at 1 p.m. though. Like, right on. Our next update brings us here, right by the Voyage of the Little Mermaid show at Hollywood Studios. Now, when all this started, the sign for Voyage of the Little Mermaid was taken down, and many of us thought that this great show, it's kind of like a, a puppet show. It's really, really good, but it's not, puppet show is not quite the right term. It's a, it's an interactive show with puppets and live characters. It's such a good show. It really, really is. But it's, the sign was taken down. And many of us thought, oh my gosh, is this the end of Voyage of Little Mermaid? We were thinking it would be. Sure enough, it's actually been redone. It's been remastered. That's a new, well, updated sign. Not new, it's the same sign. But it's been updated with new colors, so it's not faded. It's looking great for the future. So the update, as far as I can tell, this show is gonna be around for a long time. That's just from our assumptions, from what we can see. We'll find out for sure in the future. The biggest change since the last update, park hopping has returned. The big update here is you have to have your temperature check as you go into any park. So even after you leave, you gotta get it checked again in the next park. Not too bad, it's really, really quick. And there are multiple forms of transportation. Skyliner, you can take your own car, bus, or the boat. The boat is open and has those partitions between every seat so you can have space in there and go from one park to the next. Now I went over the details of park hopping in another video, but the short version is as long as it's after 2 p.m. and the parks are not full, and you can check that on the app and on your phone by giving them a call. You can park hop to any park you want. No reservation required. Now this works for Disney transportation, but the question that I've gotten a couple of times, can you drive your own car from one to the next even though you don't have a reservation? The answer, absolutely. How are you? I am park hopping. It's that easy. You just go to the park that you have the reservation for, and then whenever you're ready to go to the next park, as long as it's after 2 p.m., you can drive, you can take Disney transportation. They have made it super, super simple to park hop. Side note, that's pretty cool. That, that's a very, very cool nightmare before Christmas car. Throughout the day, you'll hear announcements just like that one, reminding you, keeping that mask on, except the exception still, stationary eating or drinking. So you can do that when you're stationary, eating or drinking. It doesn't have to be in a relaxation station. However, if you don't want to wear your mask and you are not eating or drinking, relaxation station's the way to go. Another update here at Disney, you can actually see the Innoventions building is definitely making progress with that construction. More of it is uh, a part now, it's just a very basic frame as they rebuild this building. Now, there's been more done to the other side. You may recall when we first made it to the park, these signs were on uh, different billboards all around the park. They've now kind of transferred to the trash cans so they don't uh, fall over with the winds. That was an issue that we saw early on. These signs that had these, this on it would just kind of be pushed over by the wind like in the middle of the pathway. But now, it's uh, right there on the trash can, easy to see for everyone. On this side, we can see an even bigger update. Look at that. The glass has all been installed right by where this new mouse gear building, well, original mouse gear now turned new mouse gear at least that's the name we're giving it for now, is going to be floor to ceiling windows. Can't wait to see it when it's done. Progress being made. Thinking of new things here at Disney, one of the new items that's super limited edition for 
Now, it's like an urgent update. Are these uh, pass holder merchandise right here? They've got the hat, had to get that one. It's a Mickey pass holder patch. Super nice. And they've also got ears as well. I think the reason why these hats are so popular right now is because of the pass holder change at Disneyland. That was a pretty big change. The pass holder program totally canceled, so we don't know what the future of pass holders is at Walt Disney World. Super popular. By the uh, desk, I saw maybe five or ten of them. Maybe they have more in the back. I don't know, but they said they're running out super fast. Now, the pass holder hat, you have to get behind the desk here inside of Mouse Gear, at least for now. But you do have the option for mobile checkout. This is relatively new here at Walt Disney World. You have the ability to scan this QR code, log into the app, pay for your item, and then on your way out, you stop by a cast member at a desk who helps just confirm that you did indeed pay for the item, and you make your way out. This is how you exit after going to the mobile checkout. You can actually pay package up your item if you have something fragile, put it in a bag and you make your way out and you confirm with the cast member via that iPad right there before you go and then you're on your way. It's super easy and convenient. Check out the construction progress for Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. You can see the um, the tarp that was covering it is now gone and now we can just see some of the, uh, the metal and the steel that kind of holds it all together. It's already been sprayed with some of that fire retardant just in case. They are just about ready to go. And you can see if I, I gotta back up a little bit, we can actually see, see some of the construction of that ship in the middle. You can see the very top of the construction right there where they're building that ship. And in the back, you can see another kind of a uh, tower of scaffolding right there where they're building more. Speaking of new things, uh, Disney Festival of the Arts is back, feels good. I have never tried the bacon and French onion grilled cheese along with the tomato soup in that super cool aluminum can. Looking forward to trying it with you. Sandwich in the soup for the first bite or eat it by itself for the first bite? Let's eat it by itself first, then we'll dunk it. Oh my gosh, that is absolutely delicious. Very strong kind of onion you can, and bacon that you can taste with this grilled cheese. Dipping it in the soup now. Haven't tried the soup by itself yet. Let's see if that enhances the flavor. You know, I like that a lot. Both are really good with and without the soup. The sandwich makes it though. The, the bacon and the onion and the sandwich makes it. Overall, I gotta tell you, I love this dish. Definitely recommend it. I would go for the French onion and bacon. I think it's worth it. So you gotta get the enhanced sandwich. I think it's only an additional 25 cents to get it with the bacon and the uh, French onion. Super, super good. That one's worth going out of your way for a Festival of the Art. I gotta tell you, the soup by itself is delicious. Kind of like a kick to it. There's some spice with this soup and you get that aluminum, definitely keeping that but it's a great, great tomato soup. It's not a cold day at Disney, it's a cooler day at Disney. I'd say it's in the 60s, upper 60s today. So, soup day, perfect. Something new that we're all looking forward to, Harmonious, the brand new show that is going to be replacing Illuminations here at Epcot. And last time we were here, we saw one barge. It was that one, right there. But look what's arrived. It's the second one, so we've got the one to the left and the one to the right. Now we're waiting for the one in the center. I mean, during the nighttime, it's gonna have a great show, and I really can't wait to see that show. They were actually testing these arms that flip out the other day, it was really cool. But during the daytime, they'll have these fountains. That'll be great too. I'm really looking forward to it here at Epcot. Festival of the Arts brings some really cool things to Epcot. One of those things which we haven't had a chance to experience yet, so it's new for me, is Carlson, Thomas Carlson right here, the painter we spoke to doing his performance. There's already people waiting to see him. So impressive to watch. So, so impressive. Sorcerer Mickey, and he just, as he was jumping around, he was able to put all of it together. It looks amazing. Amazing. There's the Sorcerer Mickey that he just made. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Even better a close up. Amazing. As these new harmonious barges make their way onto the waterway here, they're testing the screens and seeing a test is super cool. Take a look, you can see one single lit pixel right there. There's the other day I saw like a bunch of panels lit as they were testing it, but they're much closer than I think we think in terms of harmonious, wow. Now you know I'm a big fan of the poutine at Walt Disney World, especially the poutine from Refreshment Port. We've had the duck confit. We've had other poutine, first time ever, lobster poutine. I wanna use a fork for this first bite so I can get all the lobster all at once, when I have a teeth. Now that is a fantastic flavor. Oh my gosh, just been to a jalapeno. It's so hot, but let me tell you, the jalapeno, <laughs> maybe smaller chunks, it adds to the lobster flavor. I, it's hot, I'm not denying it, but the jalapeno plus the cream sauce and lobster together makes an, a flavor that is 
It's hard to match. Only thing I'd change here is the way the fries are cooked. They needed to be cooked just a tiny bit longer. They had a lot of people who were trying to get the poutine. It's that good. It's definitely worth it, worth going out of your way for, worth getting again at Festival of the Arts. I feel like the poutine is always a winner. You can see I'm at an official table for the festival. Trash can. Canadian <laughs> bacon <laughs> by the Epcot Chefs. Jennifer's. Speaking of new things headed our way before you know it, there is, oh, I'm just, I can see it. I can see it through the bush barrier. Take a very close look. If you look right through those two bushes, we're not close. Like we're, we're standing back here, you can see. We're not that close, but between those two bush barriers, you can actually see the pathway, which we will be walking down when this area opens sometime soon. It's gonna be soon. They do not switch to bush barrier like this when it's, uh, it's permanent or semi-permanent. This is gonna go away fast. I wish I knew the exact date. I wish I did, but considering the fact that the, the, pla the flower pots right there are done, they're ready to go, and everything looks perfectly lit down here, I would imagine pretty soon. The big question is, how is this gonna work for how you get in? I personally feel like there's going to be some kind of system where it's, it's like the park pass system, but with this just this section. <laughs> of Epcot. Can you imagine? Just think about that. Like just this section, you need a, a separate pass. Not sure how they're gonna do it, but just think about it. Otherwise, there's gonna be a line that goes all the way around World Showcase, my opinion. I should mention this is the main way to get into Ratatouille. There's another way over there. You can see I've walked around. That's where I was, this is where I am now. Now it's kind of like a corner of the uh, bush barrier. It's hypothetically speaking, and from what I can tell, kind of looking through, it looks like we'll be able to walk from here or there into this area. You can imagine how excited I am. this very cold night here at Epcot with a little photo tour. I love taking photos around Disney, especially kind of at night, taking my time, getting the, you know, the exposure and all that just right, just how I like it. And to me, the photos came out super well. I love it, absolutely love it. Thank you so much for being a part of the magic with me today. It was so much fun sharing it all with you. Until next time, have a magical day. Mm -hmm.